Mornings at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, what SAPD is saying about a shooting that involved three different crime scenes and ended with four people shot. Plus, another major food company making plans to raise prices at the grocery store on dozens of its products. Down to about 42 degrees, another chilly start, but we've got fairly clear conditions out there. I even saw a sliver of a moon out on the eastern horizon. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, January 27th. Yeah, we made it to Thursday. That's great news and a lot clearer out, out there. You know, no fog, no drizzle, at least on my ride in. And I think Mike will tell us it has cooled down fairly quickly yes. overnight. Yes, it has. We're probably going to stop right about here. Okay. Just because okay. cloud, even though we do have some clear skies here in town, a lot of clouds out there and we'll continue to cloud up throughout the day. So yeah, it's going to be another uh, sort of gray day and on the chilly side, grab a jacket and yes, temperature right now, 41 degrees. Uh, got 36 at Bernie stage is the cool spot on the map as of right now. Little bit of a breeze, so a little bit of a wind chill. 38 is what it feels like here in town. 39, both Bolverde as well as in New Braunfels. And like I said, I think we just keep the clouds kind of pretty much all day long. A little bit of uh, some breaks in the clouds this morning. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. Both went down yesterday's reading from the previous day's reading. This morning, again, pretty much steady temperatures, mostly cloudy skies, light wind, and then I think it's just going to be, once again, basically cloudy skies, 56 for a high temperature later on today. Then we have a front moving through tonight. Now, that may squeeze out a couple of showers late tonight and then early tomorrow morning, perhaps uh, a little bit tomorrow morning for the uh, the commute. Then we're going to start to clear out kind of windy, and then that still is setting the, setting the stage for a fantastic weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Seth, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting case that involves multiple scenes. Police say it all started on the city's south side on Pleasanton Road last night, not far from Division Avenue. A woman in her 50s called police for help, saying she was shot. She's now at the hospital with possible life-threatening injuries. At one point, officers tell us that two men showed up with a gunshot wound at a hospital on Barlight Boulevard just southwest of that location. Investigators say those guys claimed they were robbed and shot. Meanwhile, there is another scene in all this. Police say a man drove himself to an HEB that's not too far from that first shooting scene on Pleasanton. The other scene was at HEB near Nogalitos and Lubbock Street. Police say a man who had been shot drove himself there before calling police. He was also taken to the hospital. So in total, four people were shot with three shooting scenes that are now under investigation. This morning, more items at the grocery store are about to get more expensive. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, another major food company getting set to raise prices at the grocery store. <laughs> CNN was first to report that Kraft Heinz will increase the cost of dozens of its products, including Velveeta cheese, Maxwell House coffee, Kool-Aid, Capri Sun drinks, and Oscar Mayer hot dogs. The price hikes are expected this spring around the same time the Federal Reserve has signaled it will raise interest rates in hopes of fighting inflation. The Fed's come around to the view that these price pressures are going to remain elevated much longer than they had initially anticipated. The increase will make borrowing money more expensive on everything from mortgages to cars to credit card bills. Rates have been near zero since early in the pandemic, but with consumers now eager to spend, the Fed hopes the interest rate increase will slow the economy. In light of the remarkable progress we've seen in the labor market, the economy no longer needs sustained high levels of monetary policy support. Fed Chair Jerome Powell also hinting rates will likely go even higher. Some analysts now expect up to five rates rate hikes this year. I think there's quite a bit of room to raise interest rates without threatening the labor market. It comes as a poll finds 49 percent of Americans say raising prices have caused hardship for their family. One congresswoman from Michigan is now tracking soaring food prices on her social media page, posting pictures of high prices. And in Oklahoma, a new bipartisan proposal would eliminate the sales tax on groceries. This idea has uh, legs. And we're looking forward to working on it uh, together with the Republicans. Even with borrowing costs expected to rise, interest rates are still at historically low levels. Experts do not believe they'll reach double digits like previous decades. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. The leader of the Oath Keepers accused of trying to overthrow the 2020 presidential election will remain in jail until trial later this year. That's a ruling from a magistrate judge right here in Texas. In a statement, the judge said Stuart Rhodes might, quote, endanger others by fostering the planning and execution of an additional violent events, end quote. 
Rhodes is one of the suspects charged with sedition and conspiracy in connection with the January 6th riot on the nation's capital. He will be allowed to testify to Congress under a House Select Committee subpoena. Rhodes has pleaded not guilty. President Joe Biden has signed an executive order changing the way sexual harassment and assault cases are prosecuted in the U.S. military. The historic changes to the Unified Code of Military Justice, or UCMJ, go into effect immediately. It's part of an ongoing effort to shift sexually related crimes from military prosecutors to independent investigators. It comes after the brutal murder of Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen at Fort Hood back in 2020. The Army says she was sexually harassed by a superior before her violent death. The suspect killed himself before being taken into custody. Biden signed the National Defense Authorization Act into law last month. He says it also strengthens the military's response to domestic violence cases. The man accused of fatally shooting Harris County Corporal Charles Galloway has been officially denied bond. Oscar Rosales appeared before court officials in Houston late last night. Rosales, who had been on the run since Sunday, was charged with capital murder. He was found in Ciudad Acuna yesterday, right across the border from Del Rio. The arrest made through a joint effort of Mexican authorities and the Gulf Coast Violent Offenders Task Force. His identity confirmed through fingerprints. Meanwhile, the 100 Club is working to fulfill its mission to helping the late corporal's family, not just financially, but also on their journey toward healing. And time now, 436 and about 42 degrees out there. It was a good night for DeJounte Murray, but a bad night for the Spurs overall. We have highlights of their loss to Memphis. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Looking over at I-35 at Evans Road, things are moving there. And also at I-35 at Martin. And it's chilly yet again this morning, but that's to be expected for late January. How does the weekend look? We'll get a preview with Mike Ostrage coming up. Grab some coffee. We'll be right back. San Antonio Spurs tried to really ramp up their defense on the second game of back-to-backs last night against the Memphis Grizzlies. DeJounte Murray finds Derek White for the wide open three and a two-point edge. The Grizz roar out to a 13-point lead and thanks to a season high of 41 points by John Morant, the Memphis Grizzlies overcame DeJounte Murray's 14th career triple-double, which tied a Spurs franchise record by beating San Antonio 118-110. Murray had 16 points, 11 assists, and 10 rebounds to match David Robinson's team mark. It was the 10th triple-double for the season for the Spurs' fifth-year point guard. Devin Vassell had 20 points off the bench, and Keldon Johnson and Jakob Pertl added 18 points each for the Spurs, who have now lost 9 of 12. San Antonio kept its deficit to single digits throughout the third and fourth quarters, but never really could complete the rally. This was the Grizzlies' fourth straight victory over the Spurs. The big problem in, in some of our games is rebounding. Uh, you know, they got 28 second chance points, and that's that's tough. Uh, you got to work awful hard to recover from that, which they did. Uh, just didn't work out. Next up for the Spurs, a chance to welcome back former member of the team, now flourishing with the Chicago Bulls, DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan agreed to a three-year, $82 million deal with the Bulls last offseason, what turned out to be a sign-and-trade deal that brought the Spurs Thaddeus Young and first and second round draft picks. It's after the Bulls finished 11th last season in the East, missing the playoffs for the fourth straight year. Now DeMar has helped elevate the Bulls to number two in the Eastern Conference. He's having a breakout year. Well, Friday night's game against the Bulls will tip off 7.30 at the AT&T Center. San Antonio's Mario Barrios is moving up to welterweight to face Keith Thurman on February 5th over in Vegas. The premier boxing champions will fight on pay-per-view. We caught up with El Azteca and wanted to know why he decided to fight such a popular fighter in this welterweight debut. I'm not scared to step in the ring with, with anybody, you know. I, I know that, you know, I've been boxing since I was six years old. So, you know, I, I know I have the boxing IQ, you know. Um, I have the speed, I have the power, you know, I have the, the, the intelligence, you know, to, to compete, you know, with, uh, with the best in the sport. And, um, that was, that was ultimately the reason why, you know, we, we, we took such a dangerous fight. The winner of this fight will likely move up to a title eliminator bout this year and a chance to win a welterweight championship title. You can read more about the upcoming fight on the instant replay page of KSAT.com. And time now is 442 and about 42 degrees out there.
still ahead thanks to TikTok, people are posting videos of ear wax removal. So before you jump on this viral challenge, what doctors want you to know. <laughs> a next first look at how Prince Andrew is fighting to clear his name and demanding a trial by jury. And welcome back, it's 445. Prince Andrew is demanding a jury trial in the Virginia Dufresne sexual assault lawsuit. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Prince Andrew fighting to clear his name, officially responding to his accuser, Virginia Roberts Dufre, denying all of the claims of sexual assault and demanding a trial by jury. He knows what he's done and he can attest to that. Dufre has accused Prince Andrew of abusing her starting when she was 17 years old, alleging she was trafficked by Epstein to the prince. Andrew repeatedly denied ever meeting Jufre, claiming this now infamous photo of them could have been faked. The prince did acknowledge he saw Epstein several times over the years and even stayed at his home in New York City, even after he had been convicted of sex crimes. It was a convenient place to stay with the benefit of all the hindsight that one could have. Um, it was definitely the wrong thing to do. And we'll have a live report from Buckingham Palace coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Believe it or not, videos tagged with hashtag earwax have gotten billions of views on TikTok alone. People are using strange measures and products to clean their ears. And as 12 on your side, Marilyn Moritz reports, doctors say, hold on. They're trending gross videos like these on TikTok of people going to extreme measures to remove earwax. We saw such a huge interest in this topic, and when we looked into it, we found a wide range of products that made us wonder how a consumer should approach all of this. There's candling where a waxed fabric tube is inserted into the ear. When lit, the heat supposedly draws out debris. You can buy mini scoops. Some are even equipped with a camera so you can watch on your phone. Seen these soft drill-shaped devices that claim you can twist wax out of the ear canal? Or this one that looks like a wire whisk? Which ones should you buy? Maybe none, according to this ER doctor. We do not recommend any clearing with any devices or in any shape or form. As for candling, the FDA says to stay away and has warned about the risk of burns or injuring the inner ear. Do you really even need to remove earwax? Doctors say it actually helps limit bacteria. For hardened or excessive wax, over-the-counter drops can help, but... Every time you chew and you move your jaw, these movements by itself expels the excess of earwax out of your ears. But if you feel like there's something in your outer canal, well, a light cloth uh, should be more than enough, especially after taking a shower. So most people, he says, don't need to do anything at all. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's look outside with Trans Guides this morning. Uh, looking there at I-35 at Maine, we see some flashing lights. Not sure what's going on this hour, but it looks like traffic is still moving through that area at this time. If in the last few minutes you accidentally spit out your scrambled eggs, we completely <laughs> understand. <laughs> what was that, Mike? Saying from way back when? Am I on? Yeah, yeah you I, are I, now. I hear you. Yes. Yeah, there you are. There you are. Don't put, uh, the only thing you should put in your ear is your elbow. Right, I remember hearing that. Yeah. Yeah, doctors, probably yes. sage advice. Okay, that was just not a good start to the day. <laughs> no, we're, yeah. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people have been uh, looking at the video, so I guess it's interesting. <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> it's like a bad accident. You just kind of go, yeah. yeah we, we can agree to move on if, yeah. you, if you'd like. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we do have some clouds out there, although, uh, like Mark was talking about earlier and saw some clearing this morning, but it's not a, a big area of clear skies as of right now. 38 degrees is the, the wind chill and 40s in parts of the hill country. It's not much of a breeze out there this morning, but again, just enough to add that little uh, bite to some of these temperatures. And there you can see this hole right here in the center of the clouds, and I think that's going to be filling in throughout the day. We're going to have pretty much like yesterday, just basically cloudy skies and that once again is going to help to keep temperatures down and this is what computer models are indicating now later on tonight we do have the chance for a couple of showers around the area as the front works its way on through here and this is going to be in the overnight hours and early early tomorrow morning but most of that's going to be gone then by probably about 
the, the heart of the commute tomorrow as it looks right now. And then we start to clear on out. It's going to be breezy throughout the day tomorrow and temperatures will still be on the cool side. But it's going to be a good looking day. And then after that, fantastic weekend. So here's the uh, the timing of it uh, as far as dew point temperatures and the wind. As you can see we're still pretty much status quo throughout the rest of the afternoon. Then going into tonight, here comes that drier air. The wind shifts around here and we get much, much drier air to pull on in. So that's what is then going to set us up for, like I said, the, the good looking weekend because the dry air, of course, doesn't really hold the heat in all that well. Breezy tomorrow, then the winds subside with the clear skies. You've got all the perfect ingredients for a really cold start on Saturday morning. We're still looking at getting down right around freezing here in town by Saturday morning. Going a little bit further into the into the future. OK, come on, clicker. There we go. And uh, once we clear on out Friday, then the weekend, like I said, is going to be fantastic. Then another little disturbance moves on in here. And by Monday, that is going to give us a chance for a uh, couple of showers around here. Again, this is kind of that broad brush. I don't think it's a great chance of rain. That's going to move on out and we will start to then warm up next week after the cold starts over the weekend. And that's going to be preceding another what's right now looking like a pretty uh, significant front as far as cold temperatures by the latter part of next week. So today 50 at noon, cloudy skies. And again, I think we're just going to stay pretty much cloudy. There may be a peak or two of sunshine, but don't count on a lot. So I think that holds temperatures at 56 later on today. And then tonight we got a couple of showers that are going to move on in here as that front moves through and that will be tomorrow morning could have some damp streets around, but the wind and the drier air will help to dry things out fairly quickly and a lot of sunshine breezy throughout the day. Mid 50s freezing Saturday morning up to 63 close to freezing Sunday morning up to 69 and then 70s first half of next week. Pretty good front moves through then late Wednesday, Thursday. I forgot how good looking the weekend yes. is shaping up right now, especially mm. those near 70 temperatures on Sunday. And the nice thing, too, is it's been very consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been looking at this even earlier on in the week that it went late last week that it was going to be a really good looking weekend. Sure. And the forecast has been very consistent. Can you imagine yeah. how packed places like the Pearl oh and my goodness, the outdoor, outdoor places. patios and things yeah. like that at restaurants? For sure. Yeah. I'm sure. And the restaurants that had to close them down, you know, during this cold weather, they're gonna be like, hey, we're open again. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a great time. Time to breathe and enjoy. Thank you, Mike. 452, about 42 degrees. And coming up next, a preview of two new shows debuting on streaming soon, plus another delay for Downton Abbey. I take great pleasure in reading this. This morning we're hearing from the actors of a new crime satire show called The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. <laughs> That's a crazy title. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Did you have like the craziest nightmares last night? You have to be able to sleep to have nightmares. The aftermath of a school shooting. That's the focus of the new teen drama, The Fallout. It was written and directed by actress Megan Park in her first time behind the camera. And she tells me this was her way of processing headline after headline about school shootings in the U.S. I wanted to come at it from a really emotional place and just show the after effects of what these kids are going to live with for the rest of their lives. The Fallout is out today on HBO Max. If you can't tell from the title, the new Netflix show, The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window, is a crime drama satire. Michael Ely is one of the stars, and he tells me at times the humor is so subtle and so dark that when he was filming one scene early on, he wasn't sure how it would play. I, I don't, I mean, is this going to be funny? You know, <laughs> is this going to be funny? You know what I mean? Because... It's so tragic. No, Kristen you. Bell also stars. The series hits Netflix Friday. The British are coming. Two, one. Another Downton delay. The upcoming film Downton Abbey, A New Era, moving from March 18th to a May 20th release date. It was originally supposed to hit theaters last December. And Gone Girl Oscar nominee and The Wheel of Time star Rosamund Pike with a birthday today. She's 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time check about 457, still 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer will retire after nearly three decades on the bench. Details on who President Biden has in mind for a replacement. Plus, I'll tell you how Apple is fixing a major security problem with some of its devices. That's coming up in your morning Tech Bites.
And a quick look at the roads with Transguide. There's a look there at Highway 90 at 36th Street. Uh, Stephen Cavazos is here this morning. We're going to be checking in with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police and current suffers need your help in identifying and locating the suspects involved in a shooting that left one man dead. What we know and how you can help coming up next. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The senior most justice on the Supreme Court is set to retire at the end of the term. What this means for the president and the Democratic Party coming up. Outside with live cam this morning, beautiful start to the day, a bit on the chilly side, but Mike says colder mornings and warmer afternoons are on the horizon. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 27th. We made it to Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, well, that's a nice payoff. Uh, have a cold morning and a beautiful afternoon. Looking forward to a nice warm up as we go into a couple days this weekend. Here's Mike with more on our Thursday. But that's still a couple days away. We've got to make it through today. And today is going to, I think, look a lot like yesterday. There are a couple of holes in the clouds here and there. So at least here in town, um, you may actually see a little bit of clear sky right now, but that's not going to last all that long. We're at 40 right now. Dew points at 37. So relative to that temperature, even though that number is very low, we have high humidity. So it is once again that sort of dampish cool out there and temperatures throughout the rest of the morning. Well, not going too awfully far. We'll make it up into the low 50s by about noontime and then not much warmer than that, only about mid 50s to, to uh, finish things off. The aquifer yesterday dropped down one tenth of a foot and the allergens continue to drop down. They both of those were lower than their respective uh, readings the previous day. The updated count, of course, is going to be coming out in a couple hours or so. Wind chill temperatures, we don't have much out there. We had a little bit of a breeze and, and most of it is on the light side. So pretty much these are the actual air temperatures right now. It's not as though there's a, a big wind out there or anything like that. It's going to be not overly windy today. Different story tomorrow, though, in behind that front. So we've got cloudy skies and mid 50s, maybe again a peak or two of sunshine out there, but I wouldn't count on a whole heck of a lot of that. And then tonight, the front's going to move on through here. It's going to squeeze out a couple of showers. That'll be late tonight and then into the early morning hours. I think most of it's going to be gone by, say, about the peak of the commute tomorrow morning and it's going to be windy that will help to drive the roads out too. much much drier air and then we're going to be clearing out tomorrow then with the clear skies dry air and the wind is going to subside that's when we have the again i should put cold on there we'll be down around freezing uh both especially Saturday morning and close to it on Sunday morning. Sunshine in the afternoon, nice temperatures in the afternoon. Again, just a prize winning weekend. All the details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike Osterhage. Right now, roads are looking pretty calm. Business as usual, not a whole lot of folks out there. But as you saw a little bit earlier in the newscast, there were some problems that we spotted along 35 and also another problem here at Salado Creek. Uh, construction there at 410 at Austin. And highway. Although uh, we're seeing some of these issues out on the roadway, this not impacting drivers commute this morning. It's still very early, but let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you how things are shaping up at this hour. Let's go ahead and bring you in here to 35 right near Maine. We did have a stall that was detected there on the Transguide cameras. Actually, text I pointed that right in the northbound lanes of Brooklyn Avenue. It does look like that is cleared out, but if you just caught some of those Transguide cameras earlier, you did see that there was a stall also detected. Let's take a jump up over here to 35 crash that is flashing lights there off 35 southbound right at Salado Creek right now. Texas does have that listed as a crash. It does appear that could be on the access road, so that won't impact anyone's drive time on the highway. Let's take a jump out. Actually, we already saw the jump out it's pretty much green on the screen, and if we're going to take a look at these inbound times, we're looking at what well, we're in good shape right now. 25 minutes on I-10 eastbound Bernie to downtown. If you're traveling in from Bulverde, 27 minutes on 281 southbound 35 southbound coming in from New Braunfels, just 25 minutes at this hour. So green in these conditions, so that's some good news there, but we're going to watch that crash off 35 at Salado Creek, and we'll see how that impacts that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. We're staying on top of some breaking news. A warehouse fire just north of downtown. It's all happening in the 800 block of East Locust near East Euclid. Katrina Weber is there with a live report, and Katrina, it looks like firefighters have knocked it down. Are there any injuries? No injuries at all, and yes, firefighters do have this fire out. Now, this is the warehouse that caught fire right around 4 o'clock this morning. They say this was an abandoned building, but it looks like someone had been living inside. Some homeless people, perhaps, uh, firefighters believe. And they say that uh, there was a lot of items in there 
that uh, they apparently set fire to, perhaps in an attempt to keep warm. Now, by the time firefighters got here, everyone who was inside that building previously had left already. Uh, they did find the fire here, though, and they managed to knock it down, but not before it gutted the inside of this metal building. Uh, firefighters say, again, this was an abandoned warehouse, and they believe that it was probably going to be demolished anyway. Uh, and so they say that the, the damage is pretty extensive in there right now. But just to give you an idea of where we are, this is East Locust Street. This is right around the corner from the Pearl. So it's that area just north of downtown. And that is where this fire broke out this morning. Again, they're looking at it as a possible fire that started as a result of some people trying to keep warm. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Search continues for suspects involved in a deadly shooting on the northwest side. It happened early Sunday morning. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live with how you can help investigators. And Jonathan, what can you tell us about the case? Mark, Stephanie, right now police tell us they are looking for two suspects, the gunman and, of course, a woman who ran away from the scene. Now, let's take a look at the car. Investigators say the gunman was driving at the time of the shooting. This all happening on East Skyview Drive near Bandera Road and Callahan. We're told the victim in this case, Cody Ryan Asbury, was on his motorcycle when he got into an argument with the driver of that car. That's when shots were fired. Some of those bullets hit Asbury. Then a woman ran out of the car and the driver took off. Asbury died at this scene. Now, police are hoping someone will come forward with some information that would lead them to an arrest. If you have any information that can help police, you can, or you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And San Antonio Council members now have a better idea about how they want to spend the rest of a COVID-19 stimulus package. The federal funds originally totaled $326.9 million. That money is being used for several programs to help in the response to the pandemic. And now there's still a little more than $199 million left. City Council was presented with several ideas to use that money from the American Rescue Plan Act. It ranges from infrastructure, emergency housing to community programs. City City Council will meet again next Thursday before a vote. Metro Health wants more people to get vaccinated and boosted. As an incentive, they're offering people $100 gift cards to HEB. They have 3,000 of those cards left. You can get one if you visit a city clinic for a second dose of Pfizer, uh, Moderna's vaccines, or the one dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine. If you need a list of vaccine sites, just scan the QR code on your screen. Major news out of the Supreme Court. Justice Stephen Breyer's retirement making headlines, setting up a historic opportunity for President Joe Biden. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Longtime Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer is expected to announce today his retirement from the Supreme Court. Several sources tell ABC News the most senior member of the court's liberal wing will step down at the end of the term in June, paving the way for President Biden's first high court opening, which he has vowed to fill with a historic nomination of the court's first black woman. Honored to appoint the first African-American woman to the court because it should look like the country. It's long past time. Breyer, 83 years old, nominated by President Bill Clinton in 94, known for several major opinions, upholding the Affordable Care Act, abortion rights, and limiting presidential powers over recess appointments. Breyer told the New York Times last year he was reminded of something Justice Antonin Scalia once told him, saying, quote, I don't want somebody appointed who will just reverse everything I've done for the last 25 years. But I do not intend to die there on the court. I, I hope not. The front runner to replace Breyer is believed to be D.C. Circuit Court Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, a former clerk of Justice Breyer who has already gone through the Senate confirmation process. It is the beauty and the majes majesty of this country that someone who comes from a background like mine could find herself in this position. Also believed to be on the list, Judge Leandra Kruger of the California Supreme Court, Judge Leslie Abrams Gardner of the U.S. District Court of Georgia, and Judge J. Michelle Childs of the District Court of South Carolina. Senate Democrats are pushing for a bipartisan confirmation, already reaching out to Republicans. I did talk today with the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. We talked a little bit about the timetable. As you know, I felt that the timetable for the last nominee was too compressed. 
President Biden only needs a simple majority to confirm a new justice due to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's 2017 change in Senate rules for Supreme Court nominations. That means Democrats could confirm a new justice on a party line vote. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In the time right now, 510 and about 41 degrees out there. Glad you're with us on this Thursday. Still ahead on CMSA, how a new Apple update is fixing a security problem with iPhones and other devices. And taking a look outside with live cam, be prepared. It feels like January again, 41 degrees out there. We'll be right back. 513, it is a battle for Broadway Avenue here in San Antonio. TxDOT looking to cancel transfer orders for a stretch of the road to the city of San Antonio. So that portion goes from I-35 to Burr Road. And talks on the transfer started back in 2014 and in 2017, the city's plans on what they wanted to do with the road were approved by 70% in a bond election. The plans would narrow traffic lanes for protected bike lanes and a bigger sidewalk. However, TxDOT argues that would create more traffic congestion, which is why they are now looking to rescind the offer. Mayor Ron Nirenberg calling the entire situation mind-boggling. Why have we been collaborating for the last six years and, and spending money and time on this project and all of a sudden they want to totally reverse it? The Texas Transportation Committee Commission will be voting on finalizing the transfer or rescinding it later today at 10 a.m. We'll stay on that top of that story for you. 514, about 41 degrees. And coming up next, how Google is making it easier to get its virtual assistant to stop talking. Ever wonder what everyone's doing on their phones? They're banking with Bank of America. His girlfriend just caught the bouquet, so he's checking in on that ring fund. Oh, that photographer? He's looking for something a little more zen, so he's thinking I'll open a yoga studio. And as for the father of the bride, he's checking to see if he's on track to do this all over again. And again. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop banking. What would you like the power to do? Aleve X. It's fast, powerful, long-lasting relief with a revolutionary rollerball design. Because with the right pain reliever, life opens up. <laughs> Aleve it and see what's possible. I recently learned of a ship. What kind of a ship? A spaceship? No. It's a membership to Planet Fitness. And to $10 a month? That's right, Angry Reactions guy from TikTok. Feel spectacular in 2022 for zero enrollment, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends February 2nd. In today's Tech Bytes, fixing security flaws in iPhones and iPads, Apple is out with software updates and it fixes a major glitch that allows websites you visit the ability to see your browsing history and other personal data. And changes are coming to Microsoft's Windows 11. Beginning next month, users of the operating system can install a limited number of apps from Amazon's App Store. There will also be taskbar changes and redesigned Notepad and Media Player apps. And finally, you can now silence your Google assistant with a one word command. When the smart speaker starts rambling on, you can simply say stop and it will immediately shut off. No need to say hey Google first. The shortcut can only shush Google assistant's voice and it won't work on music. Probably won't work on your kids either. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That's for sure. That doesn't work. <laughs> stop. Please. Please. Pretty please. Pretty please. With never, sugar on top. Never works. No, not no. at all. Let's go straight to traffic. 518. Hey, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Right now, traffic is looking pretty good, but we are spotting some problem spots that drivers are going to want to be aware of before they head out the door this morning. 281 at Grayson. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look around town and see how the morning has been shaping up at this hour. 16 to Fort Osman, 35 at Salado Creek. Now, we do have a crash that's been detected on the Axis Road. Uh, just got a notification from our friends over at TransGuy letting us know that they're just waiting on the towing truck, and that scene should be clearing up. But you just saw 410 at Austin Highway a few moments ago. There is some construction that's also wrapping up out there. However, most of these spots and shots from TransGuide look pretty good so far. Let's take you to the map and bring you in where we're spotting some of these issues that I mentioned. US 90 westbound at 36th Street. We do have a stall that's been detected there. These stalls seem to be popping up as the morning does get going, so make sure you're checking those vehicles before you get out on the road. That crash that you saw off 35 southbound at Salado Creek should be clearing pretty soon, so won't really be causing any issues for drivers as the morning does go on. Taking a wider look at the map, we're still in good shape. As I mentioned, it's a green morning and we love to see that on the roadways, so green does mean go, but of course you got to take it slow. Guys? 
Well, it's kind of up to drivers, too, to help keep it green, isn't it? Yeah, uh, definitely. Back to that Google thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if you're playing the Supremes and stop? You're singing and along? Does that then turn it all off? Can we get an example? It, yes. For people that aren't familiar? <laughs> it's, it's right out, See what right I out the gate, you know, and they say yeah. stop. So. Stop. Well, maybe um, He's not if you're do singing it, it. You know, maybe. it's kind of like if we say, hey, uh, what is it? Hey, Google or something like that here. A lot of folks, it, it goes off in their house. Uh -huh. so. Going off oh, in their house right uh, now. <laughs> it's A-L-E-X-A. -E That's ah, the one that we trigger yes. a lot. Yes. What? Uh, oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's people, a foul yeah, one. <laughs> it's too early for that. People get upset about that. Okay, uh, lots of clouds hanging around here. Did see some clearing this morning, just a, kind of a, a hole right in these clouds that are sitting on top of us. And temperature, 40 in town. We've got some 30s heading out in toward portions of the hill country and 45 Rio Medina. And notice how it's a little bit warmer. Clouds really kind of hung in there a bit more, and that helped keep temperatures up out toward Uvalde, toward Hondo, and then where we had these little breaks in the clouds here that allowed sort of the, you know, the heat to escape because then have a blanket on top of us. As far as the, the dew point temperatures, they still remain very low, obviously high relative to the, the actual air temperature. And so that's why it's still sort of that dampish cool like we had around here yesterday. And not only do we have some moisture here at the surface, but then also uh, here's the water vapor imagery. We've got a lot of moisture coming in here and that's going to continue from the uh, southwest. And so that's what's going to help to keep the clouds around today. And here's the satellite picture. And notice how here's this little hole in the clouds right here, and that's what has allowed those temperatures to uh, drop down a little bit. Around the country, boy, they are setting up for a doozy off to the northeast. There's some very cold air, and then this whole batch. Notice how here's the cold air pouring in out of Canada, and this disturbance, and that's going to kind of team up with one over here along the coast, and they're expecting a lot of snow, kind of a northeaster, off to the uh, east. Now, with this flow coming in here out of the north, that's going to pull a front down through here later on tonight. Now. Obviously, we're on the cool side. It's not like we're going to see another reinforcing blast of cold air. We will get some dry air coming on in here, and that will eventually allow low temperatures to get colder for the weekend. But uh, back to tonight, once that front moves on through, it will touch off a couple of scattered showers around the area. I think this model kind of sort of overdoes it. And then this will be early morning hours, maybe during portions of the morning commute, but then things are going to be clearing out. It's going to be breezy tomorrow and we'll have some still cool temperatures around here. Then as the winds subside, clear skies, dry air, that's what sets us up for the really cold morning on Saturday down to freezing here in town, close to it on Sunday morning. Here's what the upper level uh, steering winds look like. There's the, the very, very cold air well up there to the north. We get that little taste of a kind of reinforcing shot and this northwesterly flow is going to pull in the beautiful weather for the weekend. So again, it's going to be great this weekend. Cold mornings, mild afternoons, plenty of sunshine. Then that low starts to work its way in our direction. It's going to give us a chance for some rain by maybe late Sunday, Monday, and then we'll start to warm up a little bit more preceding this next big, big chunk of cold air that's going to be moving on in here. And that's going to throw a front through as it looks right now by mm, maybe late, late Wednesday, Thursday of next week. And as of right now, it looks like it's going to be a pretty cold chunk of air. 50 today at noon, cloudy skies. And I think we just stay basically cloudy throughout the day. A little bit of sunshine, perhaps peeking in here and there. And temperatures stay again almost 10 degrees below normal. And then that front moves through tonight. A couple of sprinkles around here late tonight and early, early tomorrow. It's going to be breezy tomorrow. Much drier air. Then that sets the stage for the cold temperatures Saturday morning as well as Sunday morning. Beautiful afternoons. 70s start off next week. But like I said, as it looks right now, big chunk of cold air. Still a week away, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we'll see what holds with that next front next week. Till then, trending up. Yes. Mm -hmm. After the cold start mm -hmm. Saturday morning. Yes, Saturday. sir. Got you. Thank that, you, Mike. That's the payoff, the sunshine. 524, about 41 degrees. Up next, your morning spotlight delays for Downton Abbey, plus a Director's Guild Award for Succession. Downton Abbey A New Era has another new release date. The long-awaited sequel's debut moved from last December to this March, and now Focus Features says it'll arrive in U.S. theaters May 20th. Focus has also bumped the release of The Outfit, starring Mark Rylance as a tailor trying to outwit mobsters, from February 25th to March 18th, the Downton sequel's previous spot. 
I am mostly very excited. The Producers Guild of America is honoring Rita Moreno with its Stanley Kramer Award for illuminating and raising awareness of important social issues. Moreno said in a statement that the PGA choosing to honor me not only for my work, but for the principles I have tried to uphold and live by throughout my life is so gratifying. She'll be honored at the 33rd PGA Awards, March 19th in Los Angeles. This is next level. Succession has gone where no television show has gone before. It's the only series nominated in the drama category at this year's Directors Guild Awards. No show, drama or comedy had ever received all five nominations for a DGA series category. We'll see which episode wins when the 74th DGA Awards takes place March 12th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 528, about 41 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. has sent a letter to Moscow responding to its demands regarding Ukraine. We'll break down what was in that letter and what officials say could happen next. And how about some spicy pizza for breakfast? We'll tell you about what Pizza Hut is calling their spiciest pizza ever. Firefighters say things got a little too hot for some people who were trying to keep warm. It led to a warehouse fire. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting cold again at 41 degrees, and later on it's not going to warm up a whole lot either. Hey, good morning to you. It's Thursday the 27th. Thanks for joining us. We made it to Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Yay! And even though it's going to be, I think, cold again again tomorrow, I think we look forward to some sunshine, possibly in the weekend. That's right. Mike says it will warm up. But first things first, and hovering right around 40 degrees right now, Mike? Yeah, we had a slight hole in the clouds earlier this morning. That kind of allowed some of the, the heat to escape out in space. And as a matter of fact, uh, we were talking about sunshine. We'll see plenty of sunshine tomorrow afternoon uh, after a kind of a, a cloudy start. More on that coming up in just a second. 40 right now, dew points 37, so we still have, relatively speaking, relative humidity is very high. Not much of a breeze out there this morning, and with that relatively higher humidity, is still kind of that dampish cool out there. And temperatures out to the west, it's interesting how it is warmer out around Hondo, Uvalde, as well as obviously Del Rio and Carrizo Springs. The clouds kind of held in there a little bit thicker and, and didn't break up as much, so kept that blanket on top overnight as opposed to here in town, which is why we're about 10 degrees colder than out there around, say, Carrizo Springs. Mold Mountain Cedar, both on the uh, low side. Both of those numbers came down from the previous day's readings. 50 at noon, 56 high temperature. Uh, any little break right now, I think we just kind of cloud up throughout the day, so it's going to look a lot like yesterday. Wind is going to be uh, not too awfully breezy. Then we have a front that moves through tonight, and that's going to squeeze out a couple of showers late, late tonight, early tomorrow morning. It's going to pull in much, much drier air, then we'll clear out during the day, breezy during the day tomorrow. But then after that, that sets us up for this just spectacular weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is the very latest, sir? Oh, well, looking forward to the weekend now, Mike. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roadways. 410 at Jackson Keller. Uh, the morning is getting moving. We did spot some construction out there. 410 uh, near uh, near uh, Austin Highway. Thankfully, that has since cleared out is what I'm looking at. But 410 at Ingram Road is getting things are getting moving this morning. Let's go ahead and bring you to the map and show you what we're looking at, though. 35 South Bend. It's a lot of Creek. We told you about this crash earlier uh, throughout the day, but that is still de uh, detected as a problem there along the access road. Of course, we are seeing that tow trucks are out there working to clear this scene up, so make sure that you're giving them plenty of room. Let's take a jump further down because stalls seem to be the trending issue at this hour. 35 southbound right at San Pedro Avenue. Another stall is detected there. Earlier we showed you uh, one that was detected in those northbound lanes, but now we're spotting a new one again right there at San Pedro Avenue. And that stall that we told you about earlier, US 90 West Westbound at 36th Street that also is still posing a problem for drivers. So just make sure you give them plenty of room to get these scenes cleared up. Wider look at the map does show. Yes, we are in good shape, so the roads are open, but you got to take it slow. Mark mentioned earlier, it's obviously up to drivers to make sure conditions like this stay this way throughout the day. But we know as morning does go on, some issues could start to present themselves. Thankfully, right now, green is a trend as well as especially if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. I 10 westbound Seguin to 20 uh, to downtown San Antonio, 29 minutes at this hour. 22 coming in from Lavernia. If you're traveling 87 northbound, 28 minutes coming in from Floydesville. Not too bad right now. And 410 at Rolling Ridge, things are getting moving. We'll continue to keep a close eye on the roadways, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now to a breaking news update. San Antonio firefighters say they found no people, just flames inside what used to be a warehouse just north of downtown. 
The fire broke out before four this morning in the 800 block of East Locust, right around the corner from the Pearl. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, based on what you said earlier, it sounds like this building should have been vacant, but it wasn't. Well, that's right. Firefighters tell us that they believe that some people had gotten inside what was a vacant or abandoned warehouse and were perhaps trying to keep warm when this fire broke out. The firefighters had to move in here around four o'clock this morning. Let me give you a look at the video as they arrived uh, and found that fire inside the building. Again, they believe that someone may have started the fire in an attempt to keep warm. They believe uh, some people, perhaps homeless people, were living inside that building. Uh, inside what uh, had been a warehouse with offices, but that building is now gutted as a result of this fire, which again broke out around 4 o'clock this morning. They say no one was here. Everyone who had been inside had left by the time fire crews arrived, and there were no firefighters who were hurt. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. All eyes on Russia this morning after the U.S. sent a letter to Moscow responding to its demands. CNN's Brett Conway breaks down what was in the letter and what officials say could happen next. Waiting on Russia. The ball is in their court. With the U.S. volleying what it calls the next step in diplomacy, a letter to Moscow with input from President Joe Biden, Ukraine and NATO allies. Laying out concerns the U.S. and its allies have about Russia's actions, an evaluation of Russia's concerns, along with possible areas of common ground. But there's one area that's a non-starter, a commitment from NATO to never admit Ukraine to the alliance, Russian President Vladimir Putin's central demand. NATO's door is open, remains open, uh, and uh, that is our commitment. But that could be Russia's line in the sand. Whether they choose the path of diplomacy and dialogue, whether they decide to renew aggression against Ukraine, we're prepared either way. And not just from a military standpoint or the threat of sanctions. Because it's not just troops, guns and fighter jets that have Ukraine and the West bracing themselves. Moscow has a variety of tools in its arsenal. Uh, one of them uh, is cyber. Russian hackers have long been accused of targeting American water, power and nuclear sectors. We are preparing for every contingency, all in an effort to be ready uh, for whichever path Vladimir Putin chooses. The next step, likely a conversation. Blinken says he expects to talk to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in the coming days. I'm Britt Conway reporting. President Joe Biden is eyeing at least three judges for an expected vacancy on the U.S. Supreme Court. Each of them would fulfill the president's campaign pledge to nominate the first black woman to the nation's highest court. It's according to aides and allies, Biden and Justice Breyer expected to hold an event at the White House later today to formally announce Breyer's plans to retire. Early discussions about a success for focusing on U.S. Circuit Court Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, U.S. District Judge J. Michelle Childs, and California Supreme Court Justice Leandra Kruger. Tesla is reporting record profits after more than tripling its earnings from a year ago. The automaker's full year earnings skyrocketed to over seven and a half billion dollars with revenue increasing to nearly 54 billion dollars. It comes as limited supply of parts like computer chips plague the auto industry. Many of Tesla's rivals were forced to temporarily shut their factories and limit production. However, Tesla has managed to keep increasing its output and sales in the face of those shortages. However, CEO Elon Musk says he's putting plans for new vehicles on hold and hopes the company can bring the new vehicles to production next year. 538, about 41 degrees. And move over, coffee. Starbucks is creating a new way for you to get your energy for the day. And next, how the colors of food on your plate can contribute to boosting your immune system. And taking a look outside with live cam, another cold morning out there. It is definitely January. Didn't warm up much yesterday and the same for today, but we'll be checking in with Mike for a much brighter weekend. Just about 542, one of the best ways to help boost your immune system is by eating the right foods. And as Courtney Friedman explains, it can be as easy as incorporating a little color on your plate. 
Across the U.S., COVID-19 cases seem to be plateauing, but the Omicron variant is still a threat. Vaccines and boosters are the best protection, but another weapon may be a healthy diet. Some of the obvious things that we always want to look at is antioxidants, phytonutrients. We're going to get those from plant-based whole foods and foods that have a lot of color. Cleveland Clinic dietitian Kristen Kirkpatrick says colorful foods have a lot of vitamins and minerals that may help arm your body. She says vitamin C may help prevent or shorten infection, while vitamin D may help support immune health. Vitamin D is harder to get with little sun in winter months, but supplements can help. It's also important to talk about things that make the immune system less likely to perform well. So that is highly processed food, fast foods, added sugars. Um, those all negatively impact gut health. They all negatively impact the immune system as well. Kirkpatrick recommends switching to a diet primarily plant-based. Consuming whole foods can keep your immune system strong. Aside from diet, you can also help immune health by getting enough sleep and staying active. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. 543, still 41 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to check in with the San Antonio Humane Society oh. and the pet that's ready to go home. Look with at her today. little jacket. I love the hoodie. Well, Kim has one of the most fashionable little pups here <laughs> with the perfect attire for some of our changing weather. Who's that little baby? This little girl is Sally. Uh, she is a two month old little terrier mix and she is definitely ready for the cold weather, Mike. Oh, uh, <laughs> and not going to be the biggest dog in the world. Short coat, no. easy to take care of. Easy to take care of, um, wants to be outside and play. So lots of chew toys, things like that. Walks, all of that. Leashes, really chew toys, everything yes. you can get at your place as well, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. You can come in and get those things with us for sure. Yeah. Even if you don't adopt there, if you need to pick something up, you want to get a gift for somebody, just yes. head on over there come and do a little bit of shopping, right? Yeah, so, and we've got lots of great volunteer opportunities available too, so people can sign up and, and help us out. And don't forget, for the uh, high schoolers, those are volunteer hours that you can get signed yes. up for. So if you'd like more information on that, do a little shopping there, shop for a little puppy, head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Good seeing you. Very cute. And in your morning consumer headlines, McDonald's is taking a cue from fans and switching up its menu. So starting January 31st for a limited time, McDonald's is offering four menu hacks on its app and in stores. They include the hash brown McMuffin, which is a sausage McMuffin, but with hash browns instead of bread. A crunchy double, which is nuggets inserted into a double cheeseburger. And the land, air, and sea combines a chicken sandwich, a Big Mac, and a filet fish in one bun. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> Lastly, Surf and Turf puts together a double cheeseburger and a filet fish So for those hacks, McDonald's is selling the ingredients separately, so you have to assemble them yourself. Oh, there's the catch. All right. Mm -hmm. If you've ever smothered hot sauce on your pizza to give it a kick, well, this next story is for you. Starting now, you can grab a spicy pizza pizza from your favorite Pizza Hut. The company just added the Spicy Lover's Pizza to their menu. The pie loaded with spicy marinara, two types of pepperoni, red jalapeno peppers, and a custom-made topping with herbs and crushed chili peppers. You can get it in three different versions, double pepperoni, chicken and pineapple, and a veggie version topped with green bell peppers, onions, and mushrooms. A large order of the limited time pizza will set you back about $13. And if coffee isn't enough anymore, Starbucks has a new beverage to get you going. So Starbucks energy drinks are available for purchase online and in grocery stores starting this week. The 12 ounce cans come from or come in mango guava, raspberry lime and pineapple passion fruit. They have 90 calories and 160 milligrams of caffeine. Starbucks coffee shops will have them for sale starting on March 1st. 160 milligrams. Is that enough for us? Uh, I'll need two. You'll need two. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Let's check out traffic at 548. What's the latest over there in the traffic lab, Stephen? All of that just made my stomach hurt really bad. So. <laughs> all that food and drink. <laughs> yeah, all that food and drink, but that spicy pizza. I mean, I could I could probably have a slice, but my acid reflux probably wouldn't agree with me. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> right now, traffic, though, is looking pretty good. 35 at Martin. We're seeing things that are moving nice and smoothly through these areas. Uh, it's been a pretty normal uh, Thursday morning, but that doesn't mean we've not spotted any issues. There are definitely things out there that drivers are going to want 
want to be aware of before they travel through these routes. Let's go ahead and take you right to it because stalls seem to be the trending issue. We have this new one that popped up off 281 southbound at Divine Road. It's not posing any issues for drivers, but as I mentioned, we're seeing more of these stalls as the morning does get going. Let's take a jump down over here to 35 at Salado Creek. Now, although there are crews out there working to clear this scene up, it's still showing on the trans guide cameras and still posing an issue for drivers. Keep in mind, this is on the access road of the southbound lanes of 35 near Salado Creek, so we're going to watch that closely, but I don't think that will be a big issue as the morning does go on. Let's take a jump down over here where that stall still showing up on the textile website. They're off 35 southbound at San Pedro Avenue, and we still have that other stall not too far from there of US 90 westbound at 36th Street. So you can see that we do have a pretty busy morning, but it's not too bad. It's looking normal for uh, this hour, but you got to take it easy out on the roads. One last look around town. I 10 at Hackberry. The morning is getting going, guys. Thank you, Stephen. That hash brown with the song. <laughs> oh, I saw you over there. Yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah, I love those those hash browns. Oh, those are good. You gonna try yeah. that? You ever order the extra one? Like, yeah, hey, I'm gonna can I have another one? Or oh, yeah, yeah, I always gotta get it too, right? <laughs> yeah. Stephen said he'll buy if you fly, Mark. Mm. Oh, really? These are, uh, we need to have this conversation. Again. I don't recall this conversation. <laughs> we need to Talk work out the yourselves while I'm doing weather. Terms anyway, and conditions. Um, we had uh, kind of a hole in the clouds this morning, and that has allowed temperatures here in town and in portions of the Hill Country to be a little bit cooler. And I don't think uh, I'm going to get used to that, that hole in the clouds, though. So here's what we're looking at. 40 here in town, then 48 Hondo, 49 over there in Uvalde, and uh, close to freezing right now at Bernie Stage, 44 up the road at Canyon Lake. And the humidity dew point temperature. This is what we, of course, always look at in summertime because when it gets above 60, well, even this time of year can get above 60, that's when it gets muggy. Obviously, these numbers are very low, but relative to the temperature, it's relatively high. That's where we get relative humidity. And so that's why it's almost kind of that dampish cool out there. Yesterday, that's all we could muster, 55 degrees. And I think that's going to be the ballpark again today. Now, this particular computer model does get us up to 60. I'm just thinking with the, the, the cooler start, chillier start here in town, and then all the cloud cover around here, that's going to be really hard pressed to even get near 60. But again, this is just one computer model going for 56. And then tomorrow, another cool morning, and we'll have some clouds around here. Then we only make it into the the, uh, about mid 50s in the afternoon, but we will have a lot more sunshine in the afternoon. It is going to be breezy and then we've got the perfect weekend coming in behind that. So here is the uh, satellite picture right now. And as you can see that that very, it's kind of hard to see that shade of gray. And here's the little clearing right about there. And now some more clouds are pushing on in. So I think we then cloud up and stay pretty cloudy throughout the, uh, the rest of today, which is what this computer model does indicate. And then that front moves through tonight. A couple of showers get squeezed out of that. We clear out nicely into tomorrow afternoon. And then the wind subsides, because like I said, it's going to be breezy tomorrow. Once that wind subsides, then we've got that fantastic weekend. But cold start especially Saturday morning, cold Sunday morning, nice in the afternoon. And this much, much drier air comes on in here, and that's going to be the case tomorrow. And with that really dry air, that's what then allows those temperatures, along with the clear skies and light wind, to really drop down. Uh, humidity is going to try and come back in here, especially late in the day on Sunday, Monday. Another chance of rain with another kind of a weak front moving on through here. So here's what's going on around the country. Look at way up the top of your screen, that massive cold air up there around Hudson Bay, north of the Great Lakes. That's just pummeling the uh, northeast United States. That combined with a couple of weather systems, and they're going to be getting socked in with a lot of snow and cold temperatures. Here's this nice northwesterly flow. That means a good looking weekend around here. Then we start to watch that kind of cut off low. That's what's going to move on in here. Give us a chance for some rain on Monday, then move on out of here. Uh, still some clouds around Tuesday. We get milder, and then the next front is going to be moving through here sometime Wednesday into Thursday. And it looks like then we get sort of a little reinforcing shot of that coming in here for the weekend as well. So it does as it looks right now. So week away, of course, but uh, that's fairly potent front next Wednesday into Thursday as far as temperatures. 50 at noon today. Cloudy skies, 56 for a high temperature today. Lots of clouds around here. Next couple of days, we'll have that chance of rain overnight, early tomorrow morning, maybe a little damp during the morning commute tomorrow. We clear on out. Windy, beautiful, beautiful weekend. I'll just stop there. Beautiful weekend. Sounds good. Mike, I just figured out your fighter jet call sign if you'd been a pilot. Hmm. We're going to call you Hash Brown. <laughs> 553 about 41 degrees. Okay.
<laughs> You'll take it. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, four, zero, fireball one, daily four, six, six, nine, one, fireball two. Cash five numbers three, six, 20, 30, 31. Lotto Texas four, 30, 38, 40, 44, and 51. And Powerball, 4, 11, 38, 49, 69, Powerball 16, Power Play 3. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll start with Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer set to announce he is retiring after nearly 30 years on the bench. President Biden is going to get to make his first appointment, and he has said it would be a black woman. The early favorites for that position and what it means for the high court. Our team, of course, will be covering it all, and you'll see it right here on GMA. All right, coming up in our next hour, are you looking for a new career path this year? We'll tell you about some of the best jobs in 2022. And Transcat, let's see how things are looking out there right now. A sampler at 90 at Nogalitos, 35 at Salado Creek with some flashing lights down below. Traffic is up and running this morning. Very heavy 410 Austin Highway area. Stephen will get us all caught up coming up after the break. We want to get right to a story we've been following this morning here on KSAT 12, a fire that destroyed a warehouse just north of downtown San Antonio. Crews have been working in the 800 block of East Locust since around 4 o'clock this morning. That's over near the Pearl. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, there are not too many people out and about at that time of the morning. How did they find out about the fire? Yeah, it's usually pretty quiet here, but firefighters tell us there was a passerby who noticed the fire and called it in just before four o'clock this morning. The warehouse behind me is where it happened. Uh, firefighters say that this is usually uh, a vacant building, but there were some people in there apparently this morning. Let me give you a look at the, the uh, video that we have when firefighters were here actively working on this fire. Uh, they say again that someone called it in, someone noticed. Now they believe that there were some people, perhaps homeless people who had gotten inside and may have been staying in here and perhaps uh, set, some, set a fire to uh, some items to try to keep warm. But that fire did get out of control, did gut the uh, inside of this warehouse. It's a metal building, which is why there's not a whole lot of damage outside. But uh, inside everything was destroyed. We have fire investigators inside there right now taking a look around, but firefighters are pretty convinced that this was a fire that was started by someone perhaps trying to keep warm. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is January 27th. Thanks for joining us this morning and another cold start to your day. Yesterday didn't really warm up much and today we're hearing about the same, right, Mike? And yeah, he's saying that don't put the jackets away, especially as we head into this weekend, right? In the mornings? Yeah, it's going to be really, really cold this uh, this weekend down to freezing once again. And during the day, you know, kind of there's some computer models that get us want to get us up into around 60 degree range or something like that, which is still going to be kind of chilly. I'm going for about mid 50s. I just don't think the clouds are going to break up all that much. And we did have a little bit of a hole in the clouds this morning earlier. And so that is what allowed temperatures here in town to drop down a little bit more. Same thing around burning stage now at freezing. But then you see how uh, over toward Medina County, Uvalde stayed in the upper 40s and even the low 50s further out to the southwest where that blanket of clouds kind of stayed solid or stayed whole, if you will. Mold Mountain Cedar, both on the low side, both dropped down from the previous day's readings. So this morning, I think we stay pretty much steady right now. A little bit of clearing, but the clouds going to move back on in here and just don't really see a whole bunch, if any, sunshine today. I mean, maybe a couple of holes in, in the clouds here and there. We'll make it up to right around 50 at noon and then top off in the mid 50s later on today. So almost 10 degrees below normal. And then we do have a front moving through later on tonight. It will bring in some drier air, also squeeze out a couple of showers late tonight, early tomorrow morning. And then after that, we start to clear on out after a breezy day tomorrow. We still have that great looking weekend in store. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos.
Anything big? Yeah, I mean, you know, we still have the same issues, Mike, that we talked about throughout the entire morning. Now that we're at 6 a.m., we're still seeing the same problems out there. I-10 at Hackberry, we're seeing smooth traffic, but as I mentioned earlier, we did have some problems out on the roadway that have still presented themselves for drivers. So it's 6 a.m. We know more people are getting out on the roadway, so you got to be careful out there, especially in areas like this where we have stalls detected off 281 southbound at Bassey Road. Uh, we had it detected at Divine Road a little bit earlier this morning, but Texas has since updated that location again right there at Bassey Road. Let's take a jump down over here. 35 southbound at Salado Creek. We're still seeing that crash on the access road there. Keep in mind this is not going to impact your drive if you have to travel through that corridor on 35 southbound, but keep in mind those access road. You could still see some flashing lights out there. Let's take a jump over here off I 35 southbound at San Pedro Avenue. Again, the same stalls that we're seeing here and the same one still detected there off US 90 Westbound at 36th Street pushing out of the map. We are still seeing though the lanes are open open and they're green on the screen, which does mean that we're not spotting congestion just yet, but it's still very early morning rush is almost upon us, so that's going to change as the morning does pick up. Thankfully, if you're traveling into San Antonio right now, you're in luck from any of these communities. Pretty pleasant drive from Pleasanton on 37 to the downtown area with 28 minutes at this hour, 18 minutes if you're coming in from Castroville on Highway 90 in those eastbound lanes and 17 minutes coming in from 35 and light on those northbound lanes. One last look around town. Things are looking good, but we want to switch lanes now to the battle for Broadway. Now the city of San Antonio, they had big plans for the 2.2 mile stretch of road, but a vote scheduled for later this morning could bring those plans to a screeching halt. Now the Texas Transportation Commission is set to make a decision that could keep that stretch of road under TxDOT's jurisdiction. Our KSAT crew spoke with businesses on Broadway about the change in plans. Jonathan Cotto is staying on top of this story for us and joins us live from Broadway. Jonathan, we hear there have been mixed reviews about this issue. Tell us more. Stephen, Mayor Ron Nuremberg calling this entire situation mind-boggling. He's saying they've been collaborating on this project for the last uh, past six years, and those who work along Broadway also have a lot to say about it. Go through with the plans that are going to be beneficial to the commoners. Coming into work each day, there's no parking. You have to pay for parking nearby. It would be much easier if we were able to just cycle in. There's no question that more people are coming into my restaurant by driving than, than biking. There is a lot of traffic there. I don't think it's a good idea to restrict um, the, the traffic. Benefits of having uh, more traffic, walking and, and biking and things like that, it gives me a, a, a different opportunity in which I could target a uh, different target market. The Texas Transportation Commission is expected to be voting later this morning. That's going to be taking place at 10 a.m. Of course, this is a story that we'll continue to cover. For updates, look into our later newscast and KSAT.com. Reporting live from Broadway, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. 606 San Antonio police trying to piece together a shooting that involves multiple scenes. Officers say it all started on the south side on Pleasanton Road last night, not far from Division Avenue. A woman in her 50s called police for help, saying she was shot. She's now at the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Then officers say two men with gunshot wounds showed up at a hospital just southwest of that location. Those men say they were robbed and shot. Meanwhile, police say another man who had been shot drove himself to an HEB near Nogalitos and Lubbock Street. That's not too far from that first shooting on Pleasanton Road. Once that man made it to the HEB, he called police for help. He was also taken to the hospital. So in total, four people shot and now three shooting scenes are being investigated. The search continues for the suspect in a murder case that happened almost four years ago near an east side apartment complex. 25 year old Ray Richardson was last seen leaving the artisan apartments back in May of 2018. He was later found dead with multiple gunshot wounds just down the road from Canton Street and not far from East Commerce Street. If you have any information about this incident, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number again 210-224-STOP. The man accused of fatally shooting Harris County Corporal Charles Galloway has been officially denied bond. Oscar Rosales appeared before court officials in Houston late last night. Rosales, who had been on the run since Sunday, was charged with capital murder. He was found in Ciudad Acuna yesterday, right across the border from Del Rio. The arrest made through a joint effort between Mexican authorities and the Gulf Coast Violent Offenders Task Force. And his identity confirmed through fingerprints. Meanwhile, the 100 Club is working to fulfill its mission to helping the late corporal's family, not just financially, but also 
on their journey toward healing. The leader of the Oath Keepers accused of trying to overthrow the 2020 presidential election will remain in jail until his trial later this year. That's the ruling from a magistrate judge here in Texas. In a statement, the judge said Stuart Rhodes might, quote, endanger others by fostering the planning and execution of additional violent events, end quote. Rhodes is one of the suspects charged with sedition and conspiracy in connection with the January 6th riot on the nation's capital. He will be allowed to testify to Congress under a House Select Committee subpoena. Rhodes has pleaded not guilty. Now to Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer's pending retirement. It sets up a historic opportunity for President Biden to fill the seat with a promised first African-American woman. This chance comes with the midterms just months away and a razor thin majority in the U.S. Senate. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Good morning. President Biden and Justice Breyer are expected to make an official announcement today during a joint appearance at the White House. Longtime Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer is expected to announce today his retirement from the Supreme Court. Several sources tell ABC News the most senior member of the court's liberal wing will step down at the end of the term in June, paving the way for President Biden's first high court opening, which he has vowed to fill with a historic nomination of the court's first black woman honored to appoint the first African-American woman to the court because it should look like the country. It's long past time. Breyer, 83 years old, nominated by President Bill Clinton in 94, known for several major opinions, upholding the Affordable Care Act, abortion rights, and limiting presidential powers over recess appointments. The front runner to replace Breyer is believed to be D.C. Circuit Court Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, a former clerk of Justice Breyer who has already gone through the Senate confirmation process. Also believed to be on the list, Judge Leandra Kruger of the California Supreme Court, Judge Leslie Abrams Gardner of the U.S. District Court of Georgia, and Judge J. Michelle Childs of the District Court of South Carolina. Senate Democrats are pushing for a bipartisan confirmation, already reaching out to Republicans. President Biden only needs a simple majority to confirm a new justice due to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's 2017 change in Senate rules for Supreme Court nominations. That means Democrats could confirm a new justice on a party line vote. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Ten minutes past the hour, about 41 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, have you ever thought to yourself, the weekends are too short? Well, we're going to tell you why we may be inching closer to a four-day work week. And some of you are inching closer to headed out the door this morning for work or school. The sun is uh, about to come up eventually over South Texas. Right now looking at a very busy loop 410. We've had uh, up some few problems out there on the roads this morning. We'll check back in with Stephen and get a look ahead of your Thursday and your weekend forecast coming up. And welcome back at 614. We turn now to the debate over a four day work week. The pandemic has changed the way we work and now some members of Congress want to go one step further. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details. This morning, the push for a four day work week. A California congressman has introduced legislation that would reduce the 40 hour nine to five to 32 hours. What I'm really aiming for is a new norm where people actually uh, have a livable wage with less days in the week uh, that they have to use to earn it. This legislation coming as a record number of Americans quit their jobs. 4.5 million in November alone. And studies show the pandemic is driving the exodus with workers demanding more pay and flexibility. The 100 member Congressional Progressive Caucus is supporting Representative Takano's bill. They say in part to improve work life balance. It would not eliminate the 40 hour work week, but instead require employers to pay overtime after 32 hours. We have a chance to, I think, have uh, a less stressed nation and a happier workforce. Some countries have already adopted the four day week. Companies in Japan are seeing success with the schedule. In Iceland, some employers found productivity and quality remain the same. And Spain and Scotland have vowed to try it as well. But opponents say it could destabilize the U.S. economy, putting undue pressure on businesses, especially those with slim margins. Congressman Takano argues otherwise. Think about an extra day of leisure, how that would change the economy. And we don't know for sure uh, that this will negatively impact. In fact, I, I predict it will positively impact the economy in ways that we can't predict. 
Several American companies are already using the four-day work week and say they too have seen an increase in productivity. The legislation is still awaiting a vote. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York going to be here five days every week, <laughs> no matter what. That's right. For you. Yes, of course. <laughs> and for Stephen. Let's go ahead and check the roads with Stephen Cavasso. Hey, Stephen. Yes, I will be here five days a week as long as my schedule permits. Uh, right now, roads have been looking pretty good. We've not spotted big, big problems out there this early in the morning. US 90 at 36. We do have a stall detected out there. 35. You can see that traffic is getting moving there at Martin, but nothing too major that's going to cause slowdowns for that early, early morning drive. There's 37 at Jones. Avenue, but uh, we've been seeing the same problems throughout the entire morning, so it's almost like a copy and paste. Really haven't had to look into it that much, but there are issues out there to be on the lookout for. Let's go ahead and start here. We've told you about this earlier. If you're just waking up with us, though, 281 southbound at Bassey Road. A stall has been there for quite a while now, but we're still seeing those southbound lanes are not affected. We're seeing some green on the screen, so that's some good news for the drivers. Let's take a jump down over here to 35 southbound at San Pedro Avenue. Again, those southbound lanes were not seen any slowdowns just yet, but the stalls continue. As I mentioned, US 90 at South, uh, westbound at 36th Street. Another stall detected there. That seems to be the trend this morning. Thankfully, it's not a trend that's too concerning, but nonetheless, give those drivers some room there because it is still dark outside and hopefully they'll get some assistance from first responders or maybe it's just a quick stall. They can get on their merry way and not have any issues getting to their destination on time and safely, but give them that room. Right now, a wider look at the map does show that you're still in luck if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. No delays just yet, but that can quickly change as the morning does get going. And we'll, and we'll talk to you a little bit later on. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, and definitely a jacket for the school. Oh, yeah, this morning. And, and all day long. Yeah, and you're going to keep your jacket handy uh, really through the rest of the week and, and then going on into the weekend as well. So uh, this morning, we've got a lot of clouds around. There's been a couple of breaks here and there in town, and that allowed temperatures to drop down because it is much warmer uh, out in portions of the hill country right now, western parts of the hill country, not going up by 10. And then I think we just have basically cloudy skies today, and with this colder start, then that's going to keep temperatures or help to keep temperatures just in the mid 50s later on this afternoon. Then we've got that front moving through tonight. So we've got uh, not a bad view out there right now. Visibility is OK. All right, kind of taking away from the, the weather for a moment. This is if you are a uh, uh, student of history, this is not a good week for NASA. Today is the anniversary of the Apollo 1 tragedy, the fire when it was on the launch pad with that, uh, as they called the plugs out test way back in 67. And then, of course, in 86, the Challenger uh, disaster. Tomorrow is the anniversary of that. And then coming up on the first of the month was the uh, Columbia when it broke up over Texas back in 2003. Of course, the one that was directly related to the weather was the uh, Challenger when they had those freezing conditions on the launch pad back there in 86. OK, now as far as temperatures, got very cold readings going up I-10 in toward Kerrville, freezing right now, Bernie stage. But then you look at Medina County and all these readings are well up in the mid upper 40s. So here's where kind of the, the clearing skies were earlier this morning, allowing temperatures to drop down. But those clouds are going to continue to kind of fill back in here. As far as the, uh, the wind flow, the humidity, it is going to be staying pretty much what we see right now throughout the rest of today. And then tonight, here comes that front moving on through here. Wind shift around out of the north is going to be breezy overnight. And then humidity dew point temperatures are really going to be dropping off. So that's going to allow temperatures to drop off significantly by Saturday morning once we get rid of the wind tomorrow. Here's a satellite picture right now. And again, here's that little hole in the clouds right here going up in toward Kerrville, northern Bear County. But then the clouds are starting to fill back in. And so I think we do have cloudy skies throughout the rest of today. And then the chance for some rain as the front moves on through here. Then we clear out. And like I said, once those winds subside, then late tomorrow night, that sets us up for perfectly perfect radiational cooling, which means really cold down to freezing by Saturday morning. Cloudy skies, 50 at noon today, and then high temperature. I think just because we have the, the cooler start this morning, we only get up into the mid 50s again with primarily cloudy skies. We'll have a couple of sprinkly showers late tonight, early tomorrow morning as that front moves on through here. It's going to be windy and then we're going to clear out uh, later on in the morning tomorrow. I think most of the uh, rain or the light showers are going to be out of here by probably about mid commute tomorrow morning and then 
We have that great weekend setting up here. Cold mornings, beautiful afternoons, low 70s first part of next week, and looks like we got a fairly potent front moving through here by the latter part of next week. It's almost a shame we have some big football games to watch later in the day on Sunday because no. it's a perfect day to be outside. Yeah, we can uh, maybe see where they're playing them somewhere at some, you know, sports bar, sports bar or place that has a yeah. screens. Mm -hmm. Roll your TV set out in the back. Or, or that. Mm, sounds like a pain. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll think about it. Thank you, Mike. 621, about 41 degrees. Open up the window. Well, there you go. And still ahead on GMSA, the Spurs come up short late last night against the Grizzlies, but several Spurs had some notable performances. We're going to have the highlights after the break. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. <laughs> Drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a COPD new dawn. may have gotten it's you here, day. but you decide what's next. Start a new day and with I'm Trilogy. No once daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems you urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. Welcome back, Spurs fans. Our team really tried to ramp up their defense on the second game of back-to-backs last night against the Memphis Grizzlies. They'd come up a little short. That's thanks in part to a season-high 41 points by Grizzly star Ja Morant. Had a monster night. Memphis overcame DeJounte Murray's 14th career triple-double, which tied a Spurs franchise record, beating San Antonio 118-110. Murray had 16 points, 11 assists, 10 rebounds to match Mr. David Robinson's team mark. It's the Grizzlies' fourth straight victory over San Antonio. Next up, Spurs will welcome back former member of the team, now flourishing with Chicago Bulls. DeMar DeRozan having a breakout year after agreeing to a three-year, $82 million deal with Chicago during the offseason, what turned out to be a sign-and-trade deal that brought the Spurs' Thaddeus Young along with a first and second round draft pick. So it'll be a tough matchup for the Silver and Black. Chicago, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, currently sitting in second place. Spurs Bulls tip off tomorrow night, 730 at the AT&T Center as we welcome DeMar DeRozan Aww. back to our house. Maybe he'll stick around a bit. Well, we don't know about that. <laughs> go Spurs go. Time now, 626 and about 41 degrees out there. Ahead in our next half hour, GMSA, the latest on a feud between rock star Neil Young and Spotify over misinformation about the coronavirus. And a man's in the hospital after a rollover crash on the city's east side. We'll have some details. And a quick look at the roads with TransSky this morning. There's a look there at Loop 1604, and then there's Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Things are moving there. We'll be right back. Coming up next, how you can help San Antonio police and crime stoppers solve a murder. Outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up. Come on, we need some warmth out there. We're in the 40s here in town, 30s in the outlying areas. We're going to talk to Mike about this weekend because it's kind of a, a tale of, of two air masses for sure. It's going to definitely be different, particularly in the mornings. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, January 27th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great week so far. I guess I'm kind of spoiled being in San Antonio, uh, yes. you know, having a lot of changes, you know, in the weather. And so yesterday I was kind of, I knew the warm up wasn't coming, but I was still kind of hoping for it. And of, of course it didn't happen. <laughs> and then you're out there yeah. too long going, why didn't I take my jacket? So right. <laughs> keep a jacket handy all day long and really for the next uh, few days, it's going to be cold again tomorrow morning. And uh, then over the weekend, you'll definitely need it in the morning. So. Uh, we'll probably you know, we've got partly cloudy skies being reported out there at the airport as of right now. A lot of clouds though hanging around here. It was funny. Uh, Justin Horn just texted me about a half an hour ago. He goes, yeah, kind of on the north side, seeing some clear skies. But then you look off to the west and there's the line of clouds moving back on in here. Saw the clear skies this morning coming into work as well. 41 degrees right now. Dew points at 37. So relatively high humidity. It's that kind of dampish cool. Here's the uh, satellite picture and there you can see this little bit of clearing and then here's the clouds coming back on in here and this is why I think we're going to be and with all this moisture coming on in here. Yes, if you do see a little bit of a uh, sunrise this morning, 
consider yourself fortunate. I think that may be about the extent of the sunshine that we see today. Maybe a couple of holes in the clouds here and there, but basically just cloudy skies like the past few days. Where there's clear skies, no blanket. Temperatures have dropped down in the uh, mid to lower 30s. Freezing burning stage, but then look at that. Hondo 48, same thing Castroville, as well as Uvalde, and even low 50s further on down to the uh, southwest where that blanket of clouds has been staying overnight. Mold Mountain Cedar both on the low side. Updated count's going to come out in about a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Cloudy and mid 50s today. Then tonight, We've got a front moving on through here that's going to squeeze out a couple of showers late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and it's also going to pull in much, much drier, not necessarily that much colder air, but will really dry out. It's going to be windy tomorrow. We'll clear out during the day. Then the wind subside and that sets us up for um, a very cold morning on Saturday morning. So we've got the clearing in the afternoon after those showers. And I think a lot of the showers may be out of here by perhaps this time tomorrow morning, then the weekend. Cold morning, sunny in the afternoon, absolutely spectacular. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Hadn't been too much uh, as far as big problems this morning. Yeah, have. you know, nothing that's uh, too alarming right now. You just saw that Transguide camera, 281 at Bassey. There's a stall detected there. We'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, yeah, as I mentioned, nothing too alarming for drivers, especially if they have to travel out the door in the next few moments. But of course, make sure that you are staying alert on the roadways because we do have issues out there. Still some of the same issues that we've been seeing that stall that you just saw has been detected of 281 southbound right at Bassey Road. That has been there for a little while. The good news is, as you just saw from Trans Guide, there are some first responders out there assisting that driver. So hopefully we'll see some resolution pretty soon. But a place that we have still not seen any resolution is here off US 90 westbound right there at 36th Street. That stall has been there throughout the entire morning. I'm hoping that driver is OK. And of course, that stall can be removed from the roadways, but it doesn't look like it's causing any issues if you're traveling west westbound perhaps to Castroville maybe a little bit later this morning, but let's push out of the map because there isn't anything that's causing me to be too concerned about the travel, especially if you're going to be coming into San Antonio in the next few moments because we are green across the board. No delays just yet. If you're coming in from Bulverde, 24 minutes, Bernie on I-10, 24 minutes as well, and then coming in from New Braunfels, 26 minutes. So nothing too bad at this hour, but it is that time when traffic starts to pick up. As you can see behind me, we're going to continue to watch these roads and give you the updates as the morning does go on. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man with a history of starting fires is now in custody after allegedly starting another one. 31 Luis Reyes is charged with arson. A woman was in a shower when she says she saw Reyes use a cigarette lighter to set a roll of toilet paper on fire. A woman says when she confronted him, he lit another roll on fire and then threw it on her mattress. That's when the woman started screaming and says Reyes ran out of the apartment. The woman was found was uh, rather the woman was able to use tea to put out the fire. Reyes was recently uh, found and arrested. He is currently on parole for a separate arson charge. Also new this morning, a man is in the hospital following a rollover crash on the east side of town. It happened around 2.30 this morning on I-35 between Benz Engelman and Seguin Road. That's where police say the man drove his vehicle off the highway and into an embankment. The vehicle rolled several times and finally landed in a grassy median. The man is in the hospital and is doing okay. Officers tell us he was detained for suspicion of DWI. Search continues for suspects involved in a deadly shooting on San Antonio's northwest side. That's seen unfolding early Sunday morning. Jonathan Cotto has more on how you can help investigators. Mark Stephanie, police tell us they are looking for two suspects, the gunman and a woman who ran from the scene. Here's a look at the white car investigators say the gunman was driving at the time of the shooting. This all happening on East Skyview Drive near Bandera Road in Callahan. We're told the victim in this case, Cody Bryant Asbury, who was on his motorcycle when he got into an argument with the driver of that car. That's when shots were fired, some of those bullets hitting Asbury. Then a woman ran out of the car and the driver took off. Asbury died at the scene. If you have any information that can help police lead to the identity and location of the suspects involved in the shooting, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. If the information you provide leads to an arrest, you may be eligible for a $5,000 cash reward. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. It's a battle for Broadway Avenue here in San Antonio. Tech's not looking to cancel transfer orders for a stretch of the road here in the city. 
That portion goes from I-35 to Burr Road. And talks of the transfer started in 2014. And in 2017, the city's plans on what they wanted to do with the road were approved by 70% in the bond election. The plans would narrow traffic lanes for protected bike lanes and a bigger sidewalk. However, TxDOT argues that would create more traffic congestion, which is why they are now looking to rescind the offer. Mayor Ron Nierberg calling the entire situation mind-boggling. Why have we been collaborating for the last six years and, and spending money and time on this project and all of a sudden they want to totally reverse it? The Texas Transportation Commission will be voting on finalizing the transfer or rescinding it later today at 10 a.m. And let's look at the pandemic in Bear County. More than 1,300 people are in our hospitals. 207 are in the intensive care unit and 129 are on ventilators helping them breathe. 10 more people have died from COVID. Those numbers are why Metro Health wants more people to get vaccinated and boosted. As an incentive, they're offering people $100 gift cards to HEB. Right now, they have about 3,000 of those cards left. You can get one if you visit a city clinic for a second dose of Pfizer or Moderna's vaccines or the one dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine. If you need a list of vaccine sites, just scan that QR code on our screen. We turn now to the battle between rock legend Neil Young and podcaster Joe Rogan over misinformation about the coronavirus pandemic. Young delivering an ultimatum to Spotify, and now the audio streaming service has responded. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. This morning, Spotify users will need to go elsewhere to listen to Neil Young. The audio streaming giant is removing Young's music catalog after the Grammy winner said Spotify has become the home of life-threatening COVID misinformation lies being sold for money. Young singled out podcaster Joe Rogan, who has cast doubt on the need for vaccines. I don't think that if you're a young, healthy person that you need it. Young delivering an ultimatum. They can have Rogan or Young, not both. And now Spotify appearing to side with Rogan, who with his estimated 11 million listeners and reported $100 million contract has become a flashpoint of controversy. I understand he has a right to say that, but this platform needs to police and Earlier this month, hundreds of scientists, doctors, and other health professionals signed an open letter to Spotify urging the company to crack down on COVID misinformation. The letter singled out an episode of Rogan's podcast featuring Dr. Robert Malone, an outspoken vaccine skeptic who compared the climate surrounding U.S. public health to Germany in the 1920s and 30s. Twitter has now banned Malone, and YouTube has removed that episode, but it's still available on Spotify. The streaming giant saying in a statement, we have detailed content policies in place, and we've removed over 20,000 podcast episodes related to COVID since the start of the pandemic. As for Neil Young, Spotify says it regrets his decision. Young says he stands to lose 60% of his streaming income. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Apple is rolling out some software updates. They'll fix a major glitch that gives websites you visit the ability to see your browsing history and other personal data. And General Motors is looking for tech support. The car company says it plans to hire more than 8,000 new technical staff this year as it ramps up development of electric vehicles and services driven by software. Time check right now, 639, about 41 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about some of the best job options in 2022. And welcome back at 643. If you're looking for some extra money, there are plenty of people looking to hire you. This morning we're talking about some of the best jobs available so far this year. For the first time in years, employees have leverage and are using it to ask for more money, job flexibility, and other perks. In many cases, they're making a big change and moving on to a new career. So if you're thinking of making a switch, here are some of the best jobs in 2022 as ranked by U.S. News and World Report. Information security analyst tops the list with a median salary of more than 100,000. The positions are becoming critical as companies beef up cybersecurity and protect networks and systems. Nurse practitioner comes in second with a median salary of more than 110,000 a year. Physician assistant third, median salary is more than 115,000. And while healthcare and tech jobs dominate the top 20 rankings, lawyer and actuary are included in that list, both of which have median salaries over 110,000. 644.
go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I like your job. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's not too bad. All right, 410 at Somerset. Traffic is getting moving. If you have to head off to your job this morning, you're not going to encounter any big delays just yet. 281 at Grayson. We're seeing that a lot more folks out there this early in the morning. Thankfully, nothing too big that's going to cause those delays, but that can quickly change as we continue to mention at this hour. Uh, we do want to bring your attention, though. Watch out here. 410 westbound at Airport Boulevard. There's been some debris detected out there. Uh, not nothing that's going to cause any issues, but we still have some of those stalls that have been there for quite a while. 281 southbound at Bassey Road, and we're seeing new ones that are popping up here off 35 northbound at New Braunfels Avenue and a separate stall right over here that continues to be a pesky issue off US 90 westbound at 36th Street. That's been there throughout the entire morning. Uh, jumping out of the map, we still see that we're in good shape. Again, no delays just yet, so you can probably head to the coffee store, grab that cup of coffee and get your morning going, but we're seeing traffic moving pretty smoothly through 37 at Goliad 16 and 4 at Culebra. San Antonio is up and at them. Guys, anybody have a problem with having cake for breakfast? No, no at all. I'm okay I have with that. for breakfast. So what's the difference? It's National Chocolate Cake Day. <gasps> My yes. favorite. Yes. You can that. have chocolate donuts, right? That seems yeah. like it's not good breakfast. Absolutely. Food, so. Chocolate cake's even better. We're, we're manifesting it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got a chocolate cake hanging around here somewhere? Yep. I, I don't. I, just, I, I think there may be a run on chocolate cakes today, and for good reason. Okay. All right. Here's the. Uh, Live cam, and I've been talking about this hole in the clouds all morning long, and there you can see it. Here is the uh, the leading edge of the clouds that are moving back on in, and clouds off in the distance. Here's this hole, and that was the kind of a hole in the blanket, if you will, and that's why temperatures here in town have dropped down to the low 40s, but stayed in the upper 40s out there heading off to the west. Freezing Bernie stage, close to it out in portions of the hill country, and again, it's just because that little hole in the clouds is sitting on top of us. As far as the rest of today, and this is the, the dew point temperatures, and the wind uh, really don't see much of a change throughout the rest of the afternoon. But then tonight, here comes the front moving on through here. Wind shift around and much, much drier air gets pulled on in here. And we will have a chance for a little bit of rain uh, with this dry air. Some may evaporate before it hits the ground. Anything that then does make it down to the ground with the very dry air in place tomorrow morning and windy conditions, things should dry up fairly quickly then. And we're going to have a lot of sunshine throughout the day as well. And then the wind subside tomorrow night and that sets us up for a cold morning Saturday morning but a beautiful weekend. So here's the clouds that move back on in here. And then again, as the front moves through, it squeezes out a couple of showers into the morning commute. Um, I think a lot of it may be, it's going to be very scattered, and a lot may push on through here very quickly. So we'll still have some damp roads tomorrow morning. Then by the afternoon, we clear out quite nicely. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, like I said, just a fantastic weekend. Satellite picture, and there you can see there's the hole in the clouds, and there's that that leading edge of the clouds moving back on in here. The uh, the the edge of that uh, that hole, if you will. And like I said, that will continue to fill on in as the uh, the morning rolls on. Then we've got uh, a lot of if you've got any travel plans off to the northeast, this thing is going to be combining with a system moving up the east coast and all that cold air. And they're expecting one of those classic nor'easters, frigid temperatures, as well as some uh, a lot of snow, a couple of feet of snow, actually. And there you can see Cold air is covering most of the country right now. We get another sort of reinforcing shot of it as we go on in toward the weekend to start off in the morning. Then we get into a warming trend before the next big front next week. 50 today at noon, cloudy skies. I'm just thinking we're going to stay pretty much socked in with the clouds throughout most of the day other than that hole right now. 56 uh, for a high temperature today. And then tomorrow we have the front that moves through late tonight. We'll start off with a couple of sprinkly showers in the morning. Clear on out, windy conditions, much drier air, wind subside, cold temperatures Sunday, Saturday morning, pardon me, as well as Sunday morning, and warm afternoons, 70s starting off next week, then a big front late in the week. But sunshine first on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Very nice. We'll take it. What are you smirking? I'm listening. I'm just thinking, still thinking cake. I just Oh, oh that thinking sounds what, great right what now. Kind of chocolate cake. Mm, maybe and in the break. And you're thinking about it too. I know you chocolate are. Chocolate icing? Sure. Yes. Sure. And filling. German. What did I have the other day? I had a, a oh, I had a brownie from a place here in San Antonio. It was a German chocolate brownie. Oh, that sounds which good. Which was a win-win situation. Do you like ice cream with your cake? Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Just not a lot. Just a little bit. Totally digress. 648, about 41 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, we're live from the annual Cowboy Breakfast, not with chocolate cake, sorry. We'll show you who they're honoring this year. Yeah, it's not open to the public this year. Ah.
Outside with live cam, there is the sun starting to make its come up. That little shield of clouds right at arcing across the sky. You're watching GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll start with Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer set to announce he is retiring after nearly 30 years on the bench. President Biden is going to get to make his first appointment, and he has said it would be a black woman. The early favorites for that position and what it means for the high court. Our team, of course, will be covering it all, and you'll see it right here on GMA. This morning, another major food company getting set to raise prices at the grocery store. CNN was first to report that Kraft Heinz will increase the cost of dozens of its products, including Velveeta cheese, Maxwell House coffee, Kool-Aid, Capri Sun drinks, and Oscar Mayer hot dogs. The price hikes are expected this spring, around the same time the Federal Reserve has signaled it will raise interest rates in hopes of fighting inflation. The Fed's come around to the view that these price pressures are going to remain elevated much longer than they had initially anticipated. The increase will make borrowing money more expensive on everything from mortgages to cars to credit card bills. Rates have been near zero since early in the pandemic, but with consumers now eager to spend, the Fed hopes the interest rate increase will slow the economy. In light of the remarkable progress we've seen in the labor market, the economy no longer needs sustained high levels of monetary policy support. Fed Chair Jerome Powell also hinting rates will likely go even higher. Some analysts now expect up to five rates hikes this year. I think there's quite a bit of room to raise interest rates without threatening the labor market. It comes as a poll finds 49 percent of Americans say raising prices have caused hardship for their family. One congresswoman from Michigan is now tracking soaring food prices on her social media page, posting pictures of high prices. And in Oklahoma, a new bipartisan proposal would eliminate the sales tax on groceries. This idea has uh, legs. And we're looking forward to working on it uh, together with the Republicans. Even with borrowing costs expected to rise, interest rates are still at historically low levels. Experts do not believe they'll reach double digits like previous decades. Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Things get too hot to handle inside a warehouse just north of downtown. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Firefighters believe that someone trying to keep warm set the fire, which broke out around 4 o'clock this morning. They were called to the 800 block of East Locust, right near the Pearl, by some passersby who noticed the fire. Firefighters got here. They didn't find anyone inside this building, which was supposed to be vacant, but they did find fire. They believe that someone had gotten inside. Perhaps homeless people had been staying there and that they set the fire as a way to keep warm, but that fire got way out of control. No one was injured in this fire, and firefighters, again, are looking at the possibility that homeless people started this. Reporting north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Let's get one last look at the roadways before you get your morning going. There's 35 at Ritterman. Traffic is moving right now. Nothing too big that's going to cause a delay, but be on the lookout. Some debris detected there off 410 westbound at Airport Boulevard. Still have some stalls of 281 at Bassey in those southbound lanes and another stall there off 35 northbound at New Braunfels Avenue. Make sure to take it slow on the roads. Mike. Thank you, sir. Well, as you can see, some folks are going to see a nice little sunrise, this hole in the clouds, and now the clouds are starting to work their way back in here and going to cover us back up. But this is why temperatures are are well 48 Hondo, but then 32 Bernie stage 41 at the airport. And this is where the, the hole was no blanket on top of those colder temperatures 56 for a high today. I think we just keep a lot of clouds hanging around here today. Front moves through overnight, few showers and overnight early tomorrow morning. Then we clear on out and we're still setting up for a great looking weekend. Freezing Saturday morning close to its Sunday and then up into the 60s. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, looks great. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you back here at nine. Good morning. America is next. Thank you.